I keep running into this subject here, the purpose of God's miracles. Everybody wants to invent a miracle. Right now, some people in my building think God performed a miracle to restore my body. No. I pay $34 a month to go to the YMCA and I show up. That ain't no miracle. God performs things supernaturally. He holds the universe together supernaturally as a matter of course. But we're talking about the extra things that God does supernaturally. And for what purpose? So with God's wisdom, sovereignty, and infinite power, God created the universe with a number of established orders over which he superintends on a moment-to-moment -moment basis as a matter of his normatively established course, i.e., not miraculously. Let me repeat that. With his wisdom, sovereignty, and infinite power, God created the universe miraculously with a number of established orders over which he superintends and implements, I should say, and implements on a moment-to-moment -moment basis as a matter of his normatively established course, i.e., not miraculously. But whenever he does intervene and interrupts this normatively established order, then the Bible indicates that this is a miraculous event. So people heal, get healed by God, through all kinds of reasons. Doctor, help you? Uh, your immune system works? That fact that your immune system works within the human being, the fact that the human being actually consists uh, of the, what he does, what he is, even in, with his sin nature. That's supernatural. God is, is holding you together, operating things that's just like that. But that's his normatively established order. What happens when he goes beyond that? So throughout the history of his creation of the planet Earth and mankind, God has commenced certain programs for his purpose and initially superintended over them miraculously for a time in order to protect his plan and purpose against the rebellious efforts of men and demonic angels to thwart him and his purpose. But after a time, when God has provided certain men with enablement to continue his work, God has turned this new work over to those men as a test to see if those he has chosen would be faithful without the use of those miraculous powers. Mankind has inevitably failed to be faithful, proving that only through God's complete and total sovereign rule will mankind prove to be faithful when Jesus Christ comes again to rule. A key example of this was the inception of the church, the body of believers, who became part of the body of Christ. The period, the early period of the church age saw miraculous events. That's right, first century. But later, these miracles ceased. And today, after nearly 2,000 years of church age history, the church has not served God's purpose successfully. We await the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to fulfill that purpose. Thereafter, by the way, supernatural events will commence again. I ask everybody, well, you do agree that Jesus Christ, when he comes again, you're going to see miracles. Men will have dreams and visions. All kinds of stuff. Is we ask. Well, if they continue today, then Jesus Christ isn't going to bring anything new. Oh, uh, yeah, Joel chapter 2. Men will dream dreams and visions. There'll be miracles performed, new words of revelation. But we have the Bible now. The church was established. How did the uh, Noah, uh, Noah uh, uh, Moses, get Israel out of Egypt miraculously, supernaturally? And we have a number of supernatural things as God had an established order temporarily, but then as the Jewish age progressed, we don't have so much of the supernatural superintendence, just his established order of God's chosen people being faithful, giving the gospel to the world. And it failed. Now we have the church. 
again, with the miracles. So personal experiences of individuals throughout the world are not without spiritual influence and intervention, some more evident than others, some from God, some from the demonic side, but most are within the range of the way God has sovereignly set up the universe to operate under his supervision with the moving from one dispensation to another and a new established order. So healings, material blessings, needs being met, etc., etc., are all a part of God's non-miraculous established order. Yet they are supernaturally superintended over God. Without God's holding together the universe, the whole universe would dis disintegrate. These, in fact, are daily, even moment-to-moment -moment events, blessing the righteous and the unrighteous alike. Take a look at... I'm going to move this out here. Matthew 5, 45b. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. These blessings, which we call common grace, are in the normative order of the universe and are demonstrations of his common grace, his unmerited blessings and favor, which are constantly bestowed upon all of humanity. I go all the way down to the uh, the subatomic level, the atomic level. How are the nuclei of atoms held together with nothing but positive proteins and other uh, neutral uh, charged items? And how are the electrons flowing around in such a wonderful manner? That's God holding the universe together, supernaturally. But that's the established normative order of things. So... You take a look at Matthew 6, 25 to 26, 30 and 33. He writes, For this reason I say to you, do not be anxious for your life as to what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the, and the body than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? But if God so arrays the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more do so for you, O man of little faith? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. As a matter of fact, since God holds together the universe from moment to moment, supernaturally, right? Without God, the universe isn't equipped to go on its own all by itself. Colossians 1, 17, And he, Jesus Christ, is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus Christ leaves the, the, leaves the neighborhood, the universe disintegrates. Then every breath that you take, every moment of an electron around the nucleus of every atom, every petal and leaf that falls to the ground has been decreed to take place by God as a part of his established order of the age within which he is intimately and actively involved. I say has been decreed to take place by God, by God and implemented by him as a part of his established order of the age, within which he is intimately and actively involved. He's not away from his creation. He's holding it together. These are not miraculous things, but simply a part of God's marvelous and sovereign order of things. Might as well get on board and believe in his son. We call it the universe man included, has been in existence, according to God's words, for approximately 6,000 years. Let me see what I think of that. Number 6,000. What did I write here? Oh, creationism and evolution. Okay. I did a study on this. A friend of mine showed me a number of books and things I could uh, put together, science, the Bible, creationism versus evolution, and it amounted to about five, 600 pages. I really enjoyed doing the study. Lot to review. In any case, let's move back. Over this time, there have been just a few relatively short periods when miraculous events have occurred beyond the established order of things. These events always authenticated the man, the event, or the word spoken as coming from God. 
For example, God intervened in his established order of things at the fall of Adam and Eve when he altered the universe to reflect man's fallen condition. So over this time of creation, I did a study on that too, the genealogies from Adam to Abraham, about 2,000. Abraham through Moses, beyond all the rulers of Israel and thereafter. And then to the first century when Jesus comes to present himself in the of, of the um, Palm Sunday. And then he's crucified 2,000 less seven years. That's 4,000 church age. Well, almost 2,000 years. So over this time, there has been just a few relatively short periods when miraculous events have occurred. Remember the first century. These events always authenticated the man, the event, or the words spoken as coming from God. Remember the Old Testament prophets? For example, God intervened in his established order of things at the fall of Adam and Eve when he altered the universe to reflect mankind's fallen condition. Genesis 3, 16 to 17. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain and childbirth. That's new. In pain you shall bring forth children. That's because of sin. Yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. There isn't that wonderful harmony in the, in the uh, garden and in the universe with Adam and Eve in one sink. But I don't know how long that lasted. Maybe only minutes. Then to Adam, God said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. So the ground is going to be not wonderful. You just go around and pick some fruit or vegetable. Don't have to do anything. Temperatures, moderate, beautiful. You grow huge, healthy. No ultraviolet radiation exposure and so on. Entirely you shall eat of it, though, all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you. So you have to go do some gardening. And you shall eat the plants of the field, which must be tilled by you. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. Now man will be immortal. Right? But he will die physically. Many years he lived then, now even shorter. Barely a hundred years if that. Because from it you were taken, and for you are dust. Complete change, and to dust you shall return. My pastor often said that perhaps at the time in the garden when they sinned, they were covered with a light kind of, a, like angels, angelic beings, and had a wonderful capacities and strengths, longevity. But all of a sudden that changed. Then hundreds of years later came the supernatural event of the Noahic flood. Genesis chapter, boy, did the earth change then. When God again supernaturally intervened into his established order, Harry is bringing to pass a major event in world history which changes the entire face of the earth and the way man lives, especially his longevity. Let's see what that says over there. Now let's look for longevity. Okay, the worldwide flood and the effects of that I went into there. These things have amazing ways of creating more information in detail. So we indeed have to be students of the Word. From that time until the Tower of Babel, Genesis chapter 11, Scripture does not record his extra normative intervention, a period of hundreds of years. At the time of Babel, God supernaturally intervened and caused language and other differences to enter into in upon humanity, causing them to disperse because they were super beings compared to us today and not continue to unite one single cultic mass against him, against God. See, he's patient. He lets hundreds of years go by. They say, okay, I proved myself. I've allowed this people to intervene, uh, to uh, do what they're doing and to serve him because he built them to serve him and they're in a wonderful despite the changes a wonderful world in those days compared to today then hundreds of years later God again into being in Abraham's life establishing him as the progenitor of a chosen race the Israelites through whom the Savior Christ would be born 
throughout this period, which includes Moses and the law.